Every few years, something comes along that pushes the boundaries of technology. A Skunk Works project that would showcase the latest Fox Live Valve technology and bring the first turnkey, ready to go right off the lot, Fox factory truck to the masses. A truck made to compete with the industry's best and give consumers a new choice when it comes to 700 horsepower off-road capability. That makes us question, is this normal? Fox has a long history of making the best suspension technology across many platforms, pushing innovation further each time. Whether mountain bikes, side-by-sides, or the advent of live valve in the aftermarket, what else is left to do? I think the foundation of the aftermarket live valve is really about going to the next level, always looking for how we can improve our product for our customer, how we can gain higher performance off-road, and going to something that was electronically controlled was a natural next step. The only thing that could be done, push further and build a super truck. As far as where to, where to implement that technology and showcase it, what better to do it in a contender in the, the off-road super truck space? When I, when I heard we're doing this, I'm like, Finally, somebody needed to do this. It's, it's been over a decade that people have wanted a, a competitive uh, GM, you know, off-road truck to compete, you know, in the same market space as the TRX and the Raptor. Live Valve has changed the game. By using vehicle sensors and accelerometers, it can instantly adapt to inertial, steering, braking, and acceleration inputs to actively maximize ride quality. And when you have a fixed damper performance, or damper characteristic, you have to make compromises. With electronics, with controlled damping through algorithms, you can reduce the compromises that you have to make. That was really the, the goal or the progression with this technology is reduce the compromises, increase the performance. Fox Factory needed to focus on a more niche group. Super trucks are the best of all worlds. Powerful, capable, stylish, comfortable, and now with industry-leading live valve technology. The project was born out of a deep curiosity of what if? What if we took on the best in the world and built our own super truck? We started just by building a truck. And then after we started kind of get an initial prototype done, we came to PVD like, hey, we, we have this idea. This is where we want to go. So what are your thoughts? This was the first program um, that was pulling every arm of Fox Factory together to create this vehicle. The project got to the scale that it needed a fully dedicated person, so I, I was happy to assume that role. You know, I already had pretty good relationships with the people in the other groups. This project really uh, was, you know, super glue, so to say, to really bond us all together and really achieve this overall, you know, vehicle assembly for PVD and Fox Factory as a whole. 50 years is a long time in the game, and if you're not innovating, you're dying. But little did the team know at conception just how monumental the task was at hand. When we first started the project, I was a little apprehensive about it. A tall ask over what we are normally uh, doing in the aftermarket. To be, it drove us to get really creative on our side of how are we going to attack this. Concepts and dreaming at the desk are one thing, but getting the real world data requires countless hours from in-house engineers who punish every nut and bolt for miles. The start of this first project, so how we kind of started there, was we were looking at, okay, what can we do within a Chevy truck to elevate the performance? There's also individual position sensors on each corner, which uh, measure the shock position at, in real time. So at any given moment, that system always understands what is the state of the shock, what's the travel, what's the speed. Um, and through integrating all of those different sensor data, that system then can make decisions around what is the best damping setting for a particular situation. Parts and requirements need to be honed to exacting specs. But for some of it, those moments that require the field work, Fox Factory brought in the Brentel brothers. 
The team of brothers who know a thing or two about making race-proven parks built to conquer the harsh desert terrain. They gave us nothing. They said they're building a truck. <laughs> they wouldn't tell us the brand. They wouldn't tell us the manufacturer. They wouldn't tell us what would go on it. Like, a truck. And we're going to sell them. What the heck are you guys talking about? But we knew that um, we know how to build trucks, so that's good. With the team realizing just how monumental of a project building a turnkey truck was going to be, they got down to identifying what the truck had to be. The Fox factory truck needed to be big, bold, and bad. It needed to have a presence. It needed that V8 roar and 700 horsepower on tap. And it needed to fly. First and foremost, this truck had to perform. In order to command desire, respect, and capabilities in the off-road world, the vehicle needed to surpass all expectations on and off the road. So this, this vehicle was always performance focused. Because of what Fox represents as a brand and, and how we want to engage with our customers, we always want to deliver the best performance possible. Larger than life and seemingly exaggerated stats can lead people to believe it's all vaporware. Um, you know, no outside influence and, and took all of our tribal knowledge to say, we believe we can get it to do this. We sent some pretty uh, aggressive performance targets and just kept our nose to the grindstone and, and really just tried to get after those the entire project. Where this truck really needed to shine was in the hands of drivers. Confidence is everything and you need to be able to push boundaries and skill on any terrain. This truck needed to look the part both in the showroom and on the endless expanse of the Baja. Seeing an obstacle is one thing, overcoming it at speed is another. It needed suspension with big travel numbers and the ability to soak up the harshest terrain at speed. The teams had all the tools to test the technology to maximize the truck's abilities. Lastly, it needed big power. V8s are cool, but you slap on a supercharger, and now we're talking the kind of power to light up a set of 37-inch tires. With existing OE players already in this space, the Chevy platform was the perfect choice to bring this super truck to market. You know, there's already very well-respected players in that, but there's never been a true contender on the GM platform, so I think there's a huge opportunity. So with that, it caused us to be, or it drove us to get really creative on our side of how are we going to attack this problem and how are we going to make this into something that's going to be capable in the off-road space without impacting the structural integrity of the frame. It's not something that you can just slap together. Um, it's not something that we're taking off the shelf and just throwing together on the truck. Uh, it had to get really creative. Now, the tricky part. The team wanted to fit the live valve 3.2s in an OE platform and that came with several challenges in itself. So the biggest challenge that I faced on this was just packaging everything. You can relate to it too if you're, you're a dad or have a family and you're trying to packing everything in into a SUV, you know, the whole family, including the family dog and, and all the Christmas presents. Yeah, it's like playing Tetris, trying to fit everything together. You have to use every last bit of space and, and make sure everything fits and clears. The ecosystem around Live Valve is not just the shocks themselves, but the user interfaces, both the touch point and the app interface. Knowing that we were transitioning for a, from a passive style damper to electronically controlled damper, that tactile feeling that the user had no longer existed in the digital world. So we needed to create a mechanism that, like on a passive damper, gave us the ability for the user to make on the fly adjustments. We always want to deliver the best performance possible. And the only way to really guarantee that is to both develop the software, the control algorithms, as well as uh, the shock side. When those two things are developed together, uh, that's when the magic happens. That's when you get performance that you can't really get anywhere else. The styling of a vehicle is one of those factors that is subtle, yet of the most importance. A vehicle styling is its elevator pitch. You get one second to make the right impression, and the team had to get it right the first time. How much attention grabbing that vehicle is. Um, and yeah, once once we put the body panels on, had the suspension, wheels and tires, and that we pulled that off the lift, that was that was the moment we all knew that this was this was gonna be a 
one hell of a truck. And it was never about making a truck look bigger, look higher. It was only performance oriented. And when they came to us with that, that was like, a little bit of the aha moment, kind of, you know, really final fit and finish, right? We, we made that unbelievable suspension that bolted on, that felt really good, performed well, but all the other stuff that goes around it, I think is what Fox was just amazing at. Everything that Fox can bring, bring all those pieces together to make a complete vehicle, um, from the, the body panel fitment to the, the lights and the bezels and the, the fender pieces that go in there. You know, we, we took a lot of cues from desert race trucks, you know, wrapping the front and back with high clearance bumpers, trying to improve the apart, departure and approach angles, actually trimming the fender um, from the wheel well up to the bumper and letting that extend down to give it that fast back style. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, I can keep talking. No, no, you don't have to. The wheel wells are really nice. <laughs> Actually, I do like them. We required the truck was better in every way from what was rolling off the dealership lots. And unlike anything your local off-road shop could throw together, it needed to be... Repeatable, manufacturable, it's got to be packageable. The various teams throughout the project each faced their own unique set of hurdles to overcome from fitting the 3.2 shocks in to adjusting the steering dampers. So the steering damper is kind of a interesting tidbit. It's not very common in an A-arm truck, if at all, uh, but in our case, we're just at the limits of the OE rack. So we had to come up with a steering stabilizer that both packaged and looked aesthetically pleasing. To not using a single weld. You can't just say, all right, weld this joint here, weld this joint here. You have to design, okay, this is where the stress is gonna be from this bolt in these specific areas and have it all easily done from an assembly standpoint. It all creates a web of new problems to solve. A production truck built to last production miles. One of the hardest things we had with this was we have to honor the three year 36,000 mile warranty that's offered on an OE level. Solving for the wide range of terrain the suspension would see is not just setting compression and dampening rates to your best guesses. So field testing and dyno testing are both integral parts to the whole process. We start off a lot with dyno testing to get us roughly where we want to be. Like we know roughly how much force these shocks need to make to have a balanced vehicle. The lab testing is the lead up to the fun part of testing, the actual driving of the truck in the desert. Within the Fox arsenal is MPG, the Marking Proving Grounds. Named for the late engineer, racer, and innovator, John Marking. This remote testing facility, with the expanse of punishing desert, rock, and sandy terrains, allows the team to put these shocks to the ultimate test, while allowing for quick tuning changes and vehicle servicing. So in the thick of it, we would be out there five days a week, with set, repeatable routes, the test team can create accurate benchmarks for adjustments in the live valve on site. And in action, for much of the team, it was their first time experiencing the Fox factory truck in action. This thing was just ridiculous to drive. Like, I don't know how to put this into an engineering term of, you know, the level of fun having. Just giggling the entire time was how different the terrain felt when I was in the FFT truck. Fun fact, never driven it. They haven't let me. <laughs> From the get-go, it really did blow my mind what that vehicle could do. Oh, and then flies right through easy. And then Jonathan got a little excited, and I think when he, we were like in this ditch section, and we were like kind of diving ditches, and the, the trucks, they performed really, really well. So um, he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kept going, it's like, oh, oh, okay. After all the testing, validating, proving, redesigning and testing again had been completed. It finally came time to put your money where your mouth is. Now it came time to show the world what the Fox factory truck really was. What better way to do that than take over downtown San Diego? The Fox factory truck needed to make a splash in the scene. So the film was a no bars held production to show the flexibility of the factory truck. The shoot both on and off the screen was all action. From camera cranes, police, managing city traffic, and a few questionable takes. 
Over the past three years, Fox Factory as well as the individual teams all learned something. Nothing game-changing ever comes easy. Only with the right people behind the right idea can you collectively succeed. Looking back at all the steps that had to be taken, all the thousands of hours of testing done, all the new advancements made, without the internal questioning if you did something right, you wouldn't progress and push the envelope or strive to create new things. With teams of high-performance-minded people who will always question themselves on whether or not something can be done better than before, then there is one last question to pose. What's next?